guys welcome back to my channel for those of you just joining us my name is Osaro and I am now a second year medical student um, so today I'm here to kick off my series about how you can get into med school um, so today we're going to talk about academics which is kind of your foundation for preparing um, an application to get into med school so without further ado let's go ahead and talk about some metrics so I know a lot of my viewers, um, y'all are in various uh, grades, so like some of you guys are in high school, some of you guys are in college, and some of you guys are postgraduate. Um, and if you're not interested in medicine on my channel, I'm still so happy that you're joining us. Um, and here, learn some new facts and then maybe you can tell your friends if they're pre-med. So that way I'm just going to go over a complete um, path to medical school in terms of academics. Okay, so first things first, GPA. So when you hear academics and medical school, the thing that comes to mind is your GPA. Um, so you start having a GPA in high school and that GPA will follow you until you actually apply to medical school. So the things that follow you are your GPA as well as your all of your standardized uh, test scores. So if you take your SAT, your ACT, or you take the MCAT or the GRE, anything like that, those will all follow you because they'll ask for your standardized test scores and you are able to fill them all in, as well as your GPA. Your GPA from high school will be on your college transcript most times, uh, depending on what year you are. Once you graduate from college, then your college GPA will be the thing that follows you um, when you go to apply to medical school or go to any post postgraduate programs. So the thing about having a high GPA is not really just for numbers sakes, right? So we all hear about 4.0s. Some schools are on five point scales. My high school, my boarding high school was on a five point scale. So my GPA was out of five. Um, so either 4.0 or a 5.0 depending on your scale. And you think, all right, I have to make all A's, which is what a 4.0 or 5.0 means. But it's really about can you take the information that you're given, comprehend it, understand it in a way that you can now use that knowledge to apply to any question that they ask you. Because guess what? You're going to be doing that same thing when you get to medical school. So that's why the GPA is important. I know some people think of it as like a, a leader uh, type of score in addition to the MCAT saying like those things like are gateway keepers to people going to medical school, but it's really just metrics so they can see whether or not you'll perform well in medical school. Because every medical school, when they see your application, they're taking a chance on you saying this person will make a great doctor, a great physician, and they'll be able and competent to learn the information past the board scores because being a physician makes you a lifelong learner. So you're always, always, always going to have tests. <laughs> um, and it's one of the things that even if you don't like tests, you kind of just have to get used to the fact that you're always going to be tested um, when it comes to the field because medicine is always changing. There's always new things that you need to read up on and then pass uh, the board so you can continue practicing. So, Let's go. so required courses. In high school, you don't have required courses to go into medical school. High schools usually have your pre-college track, your technical school track, um, and I think some schools say like a community college track. They are like underneath different ones. You want to always choose your classes on the pre-college track because to get to medical school, you have to go to college. So the pre-college track usually has your... I guess the, the meat of the classes um, in terms of like your maths, your sciences, um, your AP history courses, things like that are all under the pre-college side. Those are the courses where you want to be taking. And your coursework in high school is all about getting you to the college that you want to go to. Um, whether it be a college with a great hospital associated with it or a college that has a linkage program for medical school. Whatever that college is for you that's ideal, that's what you want to aim for when you're in high school. So don't worry about aiming for preparing yourself to be a great medical school applicant. In high school, worry about being a great applicant to get you to your ideal college. So once you're in college, now that you're in college, the first day you move in, that is the day that begins 
your college career and you prepping to get to medical school. I'm not saying you can't have fun. You don't have to be like me. I kind of cut out fun during my undergrad experience until I was done with my pre-med requirements, which was my senior year, and then I was able to turn up. But you can learn how to have fun and stick to a schedule at the same time. I didn't learn how to schedule until maybe junior year, and now I'm really good at it, but my freshman and sophomore year, I was very bad at multitasking in terms of life and school, so I just kind of dropped the ball on the life side and just would only focus on school because I just needed to get through the classes with 100% focus because I could not be distracted. But if you learn scheduling and time management skills, as early as you can then you can start to schedule in some fun go to some parties hang out with friends be a real person you know um, so with that being said your GPA is your little baby like it's your little baby right and as soon as you step on campus that's when you have a GPA and that GPA will follow you pretty much anywhere you go in life um, so you want your GPA to start out as high as you can so you have a 4.0 right now and it's yours to lose. Things that you can do to keep that 4.0. So let's talk about just your general averages. So like I said, your metrics for med school are kind of your MCAT and your GPA. Um, on AMCAS, you have more than one GPA. So you'll have your total GPA that has all of the classes that you took and that'll be the number that'll be on your transcript. So you already know what your total GPA is. But also, AMCAS calculates a science GPA. I think it's BCPM. Um, it'll be right here. And that score is your science GPA, right? So all of your core courses for your pre-med requirements, those are gonna be calculated into their own GPA. So for instance, someone can have a 3.7 total GPA, but only have a 3.1 science GPA. And you'll think, oh, I have a 3.7, I'm super competitive, but then med school admissions are looking at your 3.1 like, oh, he's a little less competitive than he actually thinks he is. So those are your two um, GPAs that are main. And then because you have a science GPA, they also take an other GPA. So you have your total, and your total breaks down into your other GPA and your science GPA, your BCPM GPA. And then your MCAT score is your MCAT score. Um, and then some people talk about, about Lizzie scores or things like that, or what they say is points that are assigned to you, um, based off of your demographics or your background, your research experience, things like that. And then that'll like add to your MCAT and GPA to make one number. Um, I'm not so sure on whether the Lizzie score thing that people talk about is actually a real thing that's used in um, medical school admissions. Um, so I didn't bother calculating my Lizzie score because I just thought about my raw metrics because what I know cannot be changed is my MCAT and my GPA. I can control that. But all the other factors that people like to talk about that make up different um, calculations, those things are out of your control. You'll, if you get those points, you get those points. If you don't, you don't. So focus on what you can control, which is your raw metrics, your MCAT and your GPAs. So yeah. So what scores do you need, right? I feel like that's like the age old question. Everyone wants to know, what scores do I need to get into medical school? Well, if you wanna think about this, it's kind of tiered. So the average MCAT score, I'm gonna to refer to both old and new MCAT scores because MCAT, the old MCAT will be accepted until 2018, I believe, is the last class that would be able to, because I believe most schools take them for three years. So 2018 would be the last incoming class to um, be able to use the old MCAT, um, but everyone else now has to take the new MCAT. So in terms of MCAT scores, the average MCAT score in the US for US um, st students that take the MCAT, the average is a 25. Um, and then on the new exam, the 50 percentile, the average, the middle is a 500. The, t the, the scoring for the new MCAT is on a bell curve and it's very, very tight. I'll say that because 50% or 50% is 500 and like your very good scores that people are um, very impressed by are your 509 to 512s. That's so close, right? So close. What does that mean, right? 
basically they break everyone down into percentiles same thing with your GPA like you can have have a high GPA or lower GPA or middle of the road GPA but those things are indicative on how you're going to perform in medical school and how you're going to do on step one which is the test that you have to take at the end of your second year <laughs> y'all pray for me <laughs> um, but it's important that you score well on that because it shows the admissions committee that you are competent and you can handle information and you will do well on the, the future exams. But what do you need, right? So for med school, I'm gonna break it down here on spectrum. I'm gonna make three groups here, okay? Your first group is, let's say an MCAT of a 25 because that was the 50 percent average right so 25 mcat and a 3.0 gpa that's what you need to think about med school right so if you just know that you want to be a doctor and you want to go to med school those are the scores that you need to have minimum so that's going to be our lowest category right the second category will be like oh I want to go to medical school and I believe that where I go to medical school will impact my career in a certain way. So you want to have options. You want to be able to choose one school over another to figure out what's the best place for me. That score is higher than that. So let's say MCAT greater than 29, GPA greater than 3.4, okay? And of course, all of these have your required courses with them and they have some sort of um, other extracurricular experiences with them. So the third category is I want to go to a top 10 school, flat out. You don't care what, but you want to go to a top 10 school. You want to attain um, the top 10 marker because that's just what you want to do. Cool. That metric is a little higher. So. If to go to top 10 schools, right, let's say GPA of above a 3.7 and an MCAT above a 32, right? So those are your three groups to think about. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that someone with an MCAT of 25 and a 3.0 GPA won't get accepted into a top 10 school. That just means that their metric side of the application is not as strong to be competitive competitive for a top 10 school but the other parts of their application may balance them out in order to still be um co considered for a top 10 medical school spot so like i said these things aren't like hard fast in stone that's why i really don't like talking about metrics because it's not a cutoff in terms of you will never go to any medical school you'll never go to more than one you won't get more than one acceptance or you'll never go to a top 10 school that doesn't matter right because everyone's application is different and based off of what you write in it what your experiences are how much research you've done things like that will also influence your application academics is just kind of the foundation of it like i said your gpa is your baby and you should take care of it and then same thing with your mcat that's your second child those things are the foundation of your application, but everyone cares about what's in the middle, right? Because you want a sandwich, you got your bread, your MCAT score, and your GPA, but does the bread really make the sandwich? Or do you name the sandwich based off of what's inside? Your turkey, your um, Chipotle ranch, things like that. That's what makes a whole sandwich. You get it? So that's why I'm like, these are some guidelines to like think about and to so you can see what you need to aim for, but this should not be discouraging to you. That, that's okay. I'm going to stop, step off my soapbox for that. Um, part one of this series talked about academics, right? Um, I thought I should go ahead and mention this here just because some people going into college may not think so much about this, but it does show up on your applications. If you have institutional actions, you have to report that on your AMCAS application and you have to write an explanation telling them what happened and why you got institutional actions or why you got arrested, things like that. So all of those things will be reported. So although yes, academics are your bread ends to your sandwich, I wanna let you guys know that you are embarking on a journey to become a physician. 
Becoming a physician means that you're representing not only yourself, but you'll represent an institution, a hospital. Patients will look up to you in terms of they expect you to be law-abiding citizens. I'm not saying that, you know, everyone, we're all people, we all make mistakes, but just know that becoming a physician, you're held to a higher caliber. So I'm just gonna cite some incidences. There was a fourth year neurology residence, resident that just got fired because she got into a drunken confrontation with an Uber driver, but somebody standing nearby recorded it and put it out online and she lost her job. So those things can affect your livelihood, can affect your job. Just like getting arrested or institutional actions can play a role or affect your application to medical school. With that being said, think twice when you're going to college parties and you're getting drunk. Think twice when you are going out downtown, into town, off of campus, not dealing with campus security, but dealing with real police. Just think twice, okay? Because you don't wanna have to explain how you got a DUI in front of an admissions committee. You don't wanna have to explain how you got caught drinking in your dorm room. You don't wanna have to explain that. So with that being said, just think twice about that before you do anything. And I feel like you should live by that mantra for the rest of your life. Just think twice. Stay tuned for part two of this series, how you can get into medical school. Part two will be about extracurriculars. So we'll talk about volunteering, community service, research, and some other things that are important that go on your application. So I hope that you'll join me sometime next week for that video. I will definitely link it above here. Um, and without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye.